Hello, everybody. It is the me, Game Penguin 31, and today, well, looks like it's time to talk about the collective salt of the internet again. Now, I know that I just cover a bunch of random topics every now and then, and sometimes there's videos where there just is a specific topic or a specific video, much like the Harmon Smith stuff last week, but I don't want to cover Harmon again because, quite honestly, I missed a few smaller things that, again, I don't think deserve their own videos, but deserves to at least be talked about because, overall, it's just really funny to think about. So, with that being said, we're just going to basically start off very small and micro stuff, but we're going to talk about some of the bigger things that actually happened later this week including things such as the Bungie layoff, as well as one person who is going to try and sue from software for making their game too hard or that there is a collective conspiracy theory that he's subscribed to to sue them. So, that should be very interesting. With that being said, of course, make sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe if you want to see more of my stuff. But obviously, let's get started. Of course, starting off with the smallest of all of the stuff that we're going to talk about today, that being Push Square, one of the P P PlayStation-centric news sites, stated that uh, the PSVR 2 explodes after Sony's deep price cut for up to more than 2,000%. And how the PlayStation... Um, I don't know if it was cut to that percentage specifically, but I don't know the prices where it was. But of course, Nicola comes in and says, I was told that it has no games, but why it even at a cheaper price if people, if that was the case? Well, maybe because they want to get rid of the backlog before they continue to manufacture them because they want to continue making money off of the VR space. And it also kind of makes sense as a marketing tactic to be able to have them be bought now that they're going to be eventually releasing the new $60 uh, PC VR market, or they're releasing the PC VR uh interface thing. I don't know if that's out yet, but it makes sense that they would make this deep of a price cut. So I decided to at least look into what the actual pricing for this was, and this was the first few things that I got on Google, so again, this may or may not be what the pricing was. But it came out to around $350 for the VR headset in and of itself. And just to do some price comparisons between things like Walmart and Target and stuff, uh, the Oculus Quest 2 is around $400, and $350 depending on where you are. Again, this is also pulling from Google, so this may or may not be the pricing points all around, but tending to speak, apply out places like Walmart and Macy's and, of course, Amazon.com, where it's probably the cheapest, which is around $300 to $400. Again, having a he full headset that has all of the features that PlayStation VR offers, things such as eye tracking and um, inside-out tracking, as well as it being tied to a very popular console and a lot of other things, I think that the price point was just holding it back because, again, just eye, the eye tracking alone in certain high-end headsets could go upwards of $1,000. Even when you purchase one separately and then try to make your own, that can usually cost you in the ballpark of, in total, between both the headset and the parts to do it, probably around $400, depending on where you shop. But that's usually on the lower end as well. But that's, and I think that I'm actually exaggerating there, but... I mean, I can see why it shot up that amount if it's cheaper than or around the same price point as a Quest 2, and most people own a PlayStation anyway. What I also found really funny was that apparently Valve was also trending on the gaming space for one reason or another, and it apparently had to do with Defukboom, who was the person who made Skibbity Toilet, and yes, I know my IQ collectively dropped about that, but just hang on with me there. Um, but he basically was filing some DMC, or was basically there were some DMCA takedowns on his behalf, but that was not him going after Gary for whatever reason. So along with what he said there, so I'm not sure what that was. I just found it very interesting, and I know that it's not salt, which is why we are going to be moving on. If you want to know more, I'm pretty certain the Act Man might have a few things to say on this. Next up, we have a pyro here with a. Here's the thing. It's important as a society to support Astro Bot PS5. Oh boy, we can already tell this is going to be great. On September 6th, Sony is going in with the marketing. It is the type of game people want to be. Sony is going into the marketing. It's the type of game people have been asking for for years. What? Buying it makes you extremely it makes you an extremely attract a a what? 
and if it sells well, it equals more of this type, which... I mean, the last one makes the most amount of sense because the, Sony is going to obviously follow the money. But just because Sony is going in on marketing and it's the type of game people have been asking for doesn't necessarily translate to people actually wanting the game. Now, I'm going to be honest here and say that Astro Playroom or Astro Bot um, for the PS5, the newest one that's coming out, is actually very good. It's not the worst thing, but this is like, again, it's a very nice... I don't think it would be called a tech demo at this point, but it's a very nice thing that they, the tech demo that they turned into what looks and appears to be like a full fledged game. So I don't really have anything else there. I just thought that this tweet was really funny because it was just pure PlayStation cope in some way, shape, or form. But I mean, good for you if you want to huff that. I, I kind of agree with you. I would kind of like to see more of what Astro Playbot is. But this was also a very big thing that I think that I talked about, even a little bit uh, on some of the other ones. But it was about the uh, the uh, butt controller for Deadpool, the, the promotional butt controller that has the removable back to it. This is kind of a little bit of an update to that, where someone called The Doctor says, On the other hand, Sony gives a stylish, sleek controller to play with a new, amazing game, and... In the on the other hand, Microsoft gives you a plastic ass to a shitty Xbox games to to play shitty Xbox game studios games. Wow. First of all, let me just say both of these controllers actually look pretty good from a design perspective. I mean, again, this is coming from someone who is a graphic designer, so both of these controllers look fine. But here's my other thing. The thing with the PlayStation, the thing with the PlayStation controller versus the Xbox controller in this context is, I still think Xbox wins out at least in design quality because they still have like the ass, but they also have it to where you can remove it. So that's again fine. And again, I went over this in the other one where the magnets themselves basically are there to hold the ass in place, and that's fine for that because again, they're not going to like remake and make an entire mold for something that's going to be like limited quantities. It just makes more sense to add a different mold and then just add the magnets into it to make the controller still be able to be used and held by human hands, but also to make it so that way it's a nice display piece if you really want it to be that way. It just makes the most amount of sense. And plus, there could also be a prototype so who the fuck knows but i will say though the astro bot controller design is a massive fucking upgrade from both the playstation covers as well as the playstation as well as the spider-man 2 um updated controller for that because both of those things looked like you basically brained someone with the controller and did and did not look good like they just kind of spilled some red paint on the corner of these things instead of making the whole design cover the entire thing which at least microsoft covers their entire controllers where sony seems to kind of struggle for that at least for the astrobot one it covers the whole controller and actually looks really different and really cool i do hope in some cases that the eyeballs themselves are actually like light up eyeballs in the sense that they have like little leds in the back that kind of light up and move maybe not move but like at least light up when you turn on the controller because that would be really fun and really really cool but also some of the more interesting drama stuff that happened because, but i'm not even really a drama channel is that mr beast is apparently responsible for fraud um for over um in his claims for a three million dollar thing and apparently he was someone who worked for mr beef for like a month or something like that and he basically just has a lot of different things to there with the person in question being at chucky chunky chalky whatever however you pronounce that i am quickly i quickly want to debunk some of the info in this video since the guy who made it on made it was on my team it was my decision to fire him for erratic behavior he worked at the company for less than a month and wasn't an employee for most of the videos he mentions to have knowledge on and both of those seems to track with some of the ridiculous claims but i don't really care too much about mr beast i'm gonna be honest he's been canceled so many times or been attempted to cancel so many times that now that it's actually sticking it seems that well the entirety of his of his house of cards or his castle seems to be coming down um but i do hope for the best for mr beast and everyone who supports him in one way shape or form but now back to your regularly scheduled salt after that very needed drama break 
Xbox Series Xbox Series XS here decides to come back with a place the player count for PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium has dropped by 50% in July of 2024. What happened? Problem in Paradise Rip where seemingly nobody wants to do that. And he does list off this Game Rant article that uh, you can go and figure out if you really want it to be. But I wanted to kind of quote that because someone in the comment section says, don't forget Xbox needs to cover their $69 billion. PlayStation is is still healthier than Xbox. PlayStation's concentration is not on subscription. It's not on subscribers, but console. PS5, 60 million units sold over Xbox Series X, S, X, Series S, X, and S combined with only 20 million Lamau. I love how you can look at your own subscription service and say, well, at least it's better than Xbox, who's been pushing out stuff like this all the time, despite the fact that, like... I'm fairly certain PlayStation Plus also, like, at least in... So the extra and the premium are, like, the extra stuff on top of that. So the PlayStation Plus overall subscribers is kind of going down. And they were kind of, And it does kind of make sense that they're going down in this context. And again, I just find it really funny how you can just bring up, like, Microsoft and saying, oh, they need to do so much more to catch up the Sony, despite the fact that, you know, Microsoft, the company, kind of is worth uh, 10 times the amounts that... Sony is like they could buy Sony out later that it's very interesting um but also I wanted to point this out because someone else also brings up some of that the context who cares am I right as long as the headline fits my narrative all is fair in the game typical uh Xander jumping the gun and copy pasting it just because and he lists off the same game rank art the game game rant article that I think he lists off in the actual thing I didn't know I didn't check but he does highlight a couple things that I did want to point out because I think that that it does add some interesting context here so a new report shows that player number Numbers for games in PlayStation Plus and Extra Liberate uh, libraries have nearly have fallen by 50% in July of 2024 compared to the previous month. Uh, this steep decline in player interest mark makes July one of the lowest performing months for PlayStation Plus Extra and PlayStation uh, Premium so far. And I love how he just like lists off the fact that the player numbers for PlayStation Plus uh, libraries like the the extra and the premium libraries have gone down. I mean, I guess in some cases that makes sense. And then the next one that he does is that, however, the report notes that, uh, in fact, 14 bonus games for PlayStation Extra uh, and Premium were in June of 2024 and did skew the player numbers in this favor upon excluding the player counts uh, from days of play bonus titles. Uh, it seems that July performed 18.7% behind, 18.77% behind it. Um, but then the highlighted bit down here that I'm going to just read off a little bit is, it must be noted that this data isn't indicative of a the wider PlayStation year base. It's only sampled from about 3.1 million PSN accounts, which is a fairly decent number. I'm gonna not gonna lie. Uh, so Sony may be seeing different metrics behind the scenes. So yeah, the thing that I guess he's trying to point out, which does make some semblance of sense, is that he's basically saying that he doesn't give context for the actual decline in what the numbers mean. It's just like, oh, 50% just goes down. So I guess more context is that it specifically accounts for player numbers for specific libraries within the PlayStation 1. I don't know. This Game Rant, this game rant article is a very confusing need to read. So I don't know. Um... But I'm going to say, at the very least, that it does seem to be dropping to specific game uh, support libraries, I guess, where they don't want to play some of the older games and want some of the newer ones, or they're just stopping playing those video games and waiting for new releases. Either way, the numbers dropping of them being played kind of does make sense, given some stuff. Next up here, we have the Red Dragon uh, retweeting Une Sensei, who I believe is an Xbox fanboy, with a, I'm going to need a refund from Microsoft this generation. I don't care what you, what we weirdos say, talking about the, the releases where, again, the only one, much like how the Red Dragon puts it, the 2024 is the year of the Xbox with 
Hellblade Saga being the only one that's released, where I'm going to just be honest, everyone knows that most companies don't release games during the summer. Again, a lot of the bigger name companies don't seem to release games during the summer for whatever reason. It makes more sense in some cases to release it closer to, say, the holidays or something, and with the summer, no, I would find that very weird for that. But again, it's very strange. They just had to also put back, push back some avowed stuff, which I might get into, and if I don't, I'm just going to mention it here about avowed. But let's get into one of the bigger stories this week. And given my time frame, I might have to just gloss over it and make it its own entire video. With Jonathan here basically saying a genuine schizo thread about a guy who is suing from software for apparently having a second half of Elden Ring that is unaccessible to the average player. And he basically just posts out an entire thing of, like, a 4chan stuff. I'm just going to mention that this thing was so big that it actually got... um. Yeah, at least one article that I see and that has been doing about that, saying someone is doing some from software because Elden is too hard. This was posted the same day as that one, or at least within the same few days of someone reporting this. Uh, but Tomas Tier says, I can translate schizo, so to explain, apparently the dude is suing from software because of the lore implying there are additional worlds to explore. That is, since From Software implied there's additional areas they should have designed and pl playable from the start. Quite an interesting thing, despite the fact that I think that it also implies that in some cases, Elden Ring does have different universes with different things, but I think that that means that, that you can play through it like five different times and all of the ways that you play it is technically canon to how... Elden Ring exists as a world. That just seems to be my thing because you can start like a new separate game or a new separate save file and just like start from the beginning and do different choices and stuff. So yeah, it also implies like different endings and also like makes new game pluses kind of different. Um, I was going to talk about the actual thread, but I think that I will save that for its own video as we are getting a little bit overextended into my time here. But just know that that's going to probably get its own video because, quite honestly, it's a fun topic to talk about. And I do believe that I have, I have an article and some posts to go through from 4chan, so might as well save that for more content later if I run out of stuff. But next up, of course, we have Wario64 with the report that The Verge says Avowed is getting delayed until early 2025. The game is in good shape, uh, but it's a more of a matter to give breathing room for other, like, the very busy schedule that's being happening. And that does make some semblance of sense. Now, Avowed is one of those games that I'm looking at and I'm like mm, maybe because it does look like a really good Skyrim like a better Skyrim better in quotation marks but I mean it's not like it's bad and I do think that there are definitely some interesting ideas behind it and I personally would like to see where it goes I don't think it's my cup of tea personally because I'm not a big RPG guy that's just my whole thing I like I like FPSs but not really RPGs which is why it's very hard for me to even get through a first person shooter RPG like New Vegas because there's so many different decisions to do that it's just hard to do it but again that's just my personal taste and Avowed looks like a good game regardless, but there was a lot of salt that was generated from this, so much so that I will link a Joe from Seattle video in the description that he made, like, last week on this, um, but a couple of the ones that I found that I don't think he's talking about is Nikolai retweets the report and says, is this true? Holy fuck. With, um, I don't know why that is, like surprising again given that there is two other rpgs that are being released this year as well as i believe stalker 2 which that is more my wheelhouse and i will probably have gameplay of it on that with revision him saying upset obsidian game in good shape with an x to doubt to, to doubt mm -hmm. yeah i mean again we haven't actually seen this report and this is more of a rumor so at least at the time of me recording this it might be confirmed by the time that i'm posting this video so yeah but this is from last week so i'm just going off of last week's information the next one here is just a hour list of a gold the golden order with a hearty f u very articulated and well planned argument very nice with a retro here saying damn xbox gets so many games coming out that they need to delay so they don't stack on top of each other now which I don't know if this is sarcastic or not. I know about retro guy, uh, about the, the retro person, so I'm unsure if this is supposed to be like a troll post or something like that. I just find it interesting that he posted this. 
Xbox, uh, so Noir comes back with a Xbox about to pull off another 2022, two empty years out of the four this gen. And it's not like 2021 and 2023 were abundant either. 2021 was empty until the last three months. 2023 had a controversial Starfield, an awful Redfall, a forgotten Forza, and a Horizon, what? FHFR is now multiplat. Oh, Hi-Fi Rush. I just blanked on the name there. Which, I mean, I guess that is okay. I guess that does make some semblance of sense. But I'm just confused as to why, like, this is going to be pulling off another 2022, saying that 2022 was, like, an empty year. They still have games coming out. And if you looked at the, like, showcase, they still have at least three coming out this time uh, with Stalker 2 and stuff. But I don't know. It just seems very interesting that Noir would kind of talk about this being as bad. And, of course, we have to then finally talking about the next point here being um, uh, Jim Ryan uh, was talking about how Bungie offers way more value than the Activision does for the Xbox, despite the fact that they have let go about 200 rolls, or uh, roughly 17%, as some people have called it, from the official Bungie account where people of those rolls were now basically gonzo, because there was like a lot of people that got fired that day. Oops. And, you know, Bungie is supposedly offering great value to Ec- to Microsoft, despite, the, or the, not Ec- Microsoft, to Sony, I should say, which I find very interesting that even with all that Sony money, they still had to lay off about 200 people. And the Bungie CEO is a disgraceful leadership in a nutshell, according to Yang Ya, which, I mean, has some weird takes sometimes, but I mean, Looking at the headlines that he posted here for this specifically is quite interesting because there was Bungie leadership asserts that the employees at Sony will not uh, result in layoffs, mass Bungie layoff within the next Destiny 2 community and stuff, another Bungie layoff thing, and another person being angry about it with more Bungie layoffs. So, again, it's one of those things where they said, oh, we're not going to lay off people and this is obviously going to be good. And then everyone got laid off because of money reasons. Yay! I love this corporate world. <sighs> I'm going to be honest, this video really, again, had no rhyme or reason to really do anything with. And to be honest, I prefer to do more focused stuff, but there were so many different topics that I wanted to cover but couldn't cover last week because of work and job and stuff like that. So I just decided to shotgun about as much of the information as I could into this. So I hope that you at least found it somewhat entertaining because there are so many different topics in this video that, quite honestly, the collective salt intake should be enough to at least last for you a couple of days. I will probably then decide to do a deeper dive on one of the video or on one of the specific topics, that being the topic of um, the from software uh, suing thing that will probably be like a Thursday video and I'll do a more deeper dive into that but I just need more time to do research on it so expect that to so expect that to be more of a expect this to be more of a trip anyway I think that I've wasted enough of your time I do love and appreciate all of your support if you've made it this far into the video if you want to support me in any way shape or form links down to everything in the description below my new album and stuff has been out for a couple of months uh, or been out for at least a month now um, but I'm looking to release more stuff later this year probably again late December late, late August early September with at least one maybe smaller release around October time because I have a couple of uh, like Halloween theme stuff that I want to kind of do music wise that's all on the band camp if you really want to care for it um, follow me on the Twitter follow me on the Twitch follow me on the other stuff and like I said before uh, I do love and appreciate all of you and again thank you so much for watching my name is GamePanga21 and a peace off hey man No, no, no.